Strong systems create stability. And if there's one thing we could all use right now, it's a little stability. If you're in a position right now to shore up the foundation of your business and create stability, you can ride towards future growth. This is a great time to examine the systems your business is built on and how you manage those systems. And since most of us manage those systems with a core piece of software, I figured that was as good of a place as any to start. I'm Susan Bowles, and you're listening to Break the Ceiling, the show where we break down unconventional strategies you can use to save time, boost your profit, and increase your operational capacity. Most businesses grow on the fly. We add software and processes and systems here and there, patching in tools for now because, well, it'll do. But for now almost always turns into forever. Because who wants to spend time picking out and setting up project management software when you could be out closing clients or delivering white glove service? You probably picked your project management software based on a recommendation or because it's something you're supposed to have. Maybe you got started on Asana or Trello because that's what, well, everybody was using at the time. But now three or five or 10 years down the road, it's become a major limitation to you and your team being able to actually do your work. When you're focusing on getting lean and efficient in your business, evaluating your software is an easy place to start. For remote companies, not only is software usually one of the biggest expenses, it's also usually a primary communication tool. It's what you use to let your team know what to work on, and it keeps everyone in the loop on what's happening. Or at least it should. So it's worth your time to take a few minutes and evaluate the tools you're using. And that's what we'll be talking about today. Project management software. Can I just tell you how excited I am for this? We are going full on geek this week. I've brought in two of my fellow project management software nerds to chat with me. Marie Poulin of Notion Mastery helps ambitious business owners level up their digital systems, workflow, and productivity so they can spend more time on what matters. She's been an influential voice in the Notion community, and she's created a lot of the Notion resources that are available today. Layla Pomper is a fellow member of Team ClickUp. She owns ProcessDriven.co, where she equips old school teams with the right software to increase their consistency and profitability in day-to-day operations. And we're talking about why you would pick one particular software tool over another, the importance of making sure the software you pick works with your brain, and how to avoid sabotaging yourself with getting distracted by the latest shiny new tool. All right. Hi, ladies. Thanks so much for being here today. I think this is going to be an awesome conversation. Yeah. Yeah, Thanks for having us. So Marie, you are the resident Notion expert. You have become like the Notion person. So what made you choose Notion as your tool of choice? Funny enough, I was actually doing my permaculture diploma and I needed a place to do really messy thinking, but also track to do's, to track research, to track uh, (laughs) images, videos. It's a little strange, but I just needed a place that I could just get really messy and kind of pull a number of different types of media together. And I stumbled, I had actually tried Notion a year prior and was like, okay, this is kind of cool, but I don't really see like what I can do with this. And I kind of let it sit for about a year and then I picked it back up again when I was doing my diploma and once I started to see what was possible and then all of my like personal to-dos were in there our business to-dos were still in Asana and I still felt like I was kind of pulled between two different systems Mm -hmm. so I needed to like get my husband's buy-in on Notion which meant I then had to recreate what we were doing in Asana inside of Notion because I knew it was like show, don't tell. There was no way I was going to get his buy-in if I was like, look at this like shiny tool that can do all these things. I was like, look what it can do. We can recreate our to-dos and our priority system and everything. So that was kind of the beginning of opening that whole can of worms with Notion. Yeah, I, like you, I had a very similar reaction when I first was in Notion um, was this is, this seems cool, but also I can't figure out how to make this Like the learning curve of it felt so steep that it it was just, I was just like, yeah, this is cool, but mm, that seems like a lot of effort. (laughs) So Layla, I know that you are on the ClickUp bandwagon with me. Can you talk a little bit about why ClickUp felt like the right tool for you? Yeah, team ClickUp here. (laughs) (laughs) But you know, 
it's funny because I kind of had a similar story to what Marie was saying because I started using ClickUp and I was kind of like, this is kind of clunky. <laughs> it's the opposite, right? It was too much structure. And so mm. I started using it and I was like, oh, I don't know. And I kind of, I had a free account and I was like, eh, I'm not sure if this makes sense to move my team to it. So I was using Asana and Trello and just about every other tool partially. And I can't say what it was, but at some point I was like, all right, I need a little bit more. I think it was specifically Asana. I needed a little bit more complexity than what Asana could do, uh, even on the pro plan. It was just kind of felt like everything was extra. And so I was like, let me just go back to this ClickUp thing and start playing with it more seriously. And yeah, <laughs> I just kind of um, fell in love with what exactly um, ClickUp can do. So the reason I really like it is because it has a little bit more structure to it, but it can be, it views the same data in so many different ways, which is kind of like an Asana attribute. Um, it lets you view one thing in a Kanban, one thing in a list, one thing in a Gantt chart. And I think because certain times I wanna be really Excel spreadsheety, and sometimes I just feel like I need to almost mind map, um, being able to do that all in the same tool without having to have a million tabs open, which was kind of my usual, um, was really refreshing. Yeah, I had um, a similar experience with ClickUp to you, Layla, <laughs> where when I first started it, um, so I was apparently a very early, like I think I was one of the mm -hmm. first 100 users, which I didn't realize until they started doing the ClickUp 2.0 releases. Yeah. Um, when they're like, we're rolling it out by how old your account is. And I was like, <laughs> oh, I, I didn't know I was that early. <laughs> Um, yeah. And for me, ClickUp 1.0 was like you, it was nice, mm -hmm. but not enough. So no. I was still, um, I was using Excello, which is mm -hmm. another um, project management software that is kind, it's sort of the opposite, I feel like, of Notion <laughs> and ClickUp in that it is extremely structured. It is very specifically um, a project management tool that works exactly the way you would expect project management tools to work. Um, and it has a CRM and some invoicing stuff. So it's a really nice tool if you are an agency that um, invoices people like time and materials mm -hmm. and you're trying to do a lot of like project based costing, but it is the completely and other end of the spectrum because it is very robust and you, it's flexible, but really only in the like automation kind of triggers. Mm -hmm. And so I was using Excello and then using Todoist for my personal stuff because I really liked how like streamlined it was. I'm very checklisted. Mm -hmm. Um and for me, ClickUp, once ClickUp got to like 2.0 where there were so many other features and like custom yeah. fields and all of those things, it felt um like it was familiar. Mm -hmm in a way that Notion didn't feel familiar to me. Um, Notion felt like I had to go build the relational database time, and yeah. I was too lazy to do that. Um, <laughs> where ClickUp felt like the relational database was there and I could just take advantage of it. Um, but for me, another big factor was um, the Zapier integration that ClickUp has that, as far as I know, Notion still doesn't. I know it's on the roadmap, it's coming. Yep. yep. Um, <laughs> That's a big but one. also the recurring tasks. So a lot of my tasks are um, like bookkeeping e kind of things that I have to do the same thing at the same point of the month every month. Um, and that was a big aspect of ClickUp that I really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. What I'm interested in, um, in your take on this, is a lot of the folks that I've talked to that are very um, Notion-y people, people that like Notion, are um, more content people. Mm -hmm. So like when thoughts come out of your head, they come out like writing in full sentences versus um, project manager -y type people like Layla and I are that are that like the click up style because stuff comes out in tasks. Like Ooh, yeah. when when things come out of your head, like when things come out of my head, it's OK, here's a project and here are all the steps that have to happen versus I'm going to like write about what my idea is from a philosophical perspective point of view and then turn that into a project. How how does that resonate with you guys? Does that feel at all yes. <laughs> legit? <laughs> yeah, I, I think I can totally relate to what you're saying because I think the, pro the problem I've had with some of those tools is they're already ready for the to-dos, they're already ready for the projects, but there's no uh, almost step before things are ready to be activated. And so Notion is almost a little bit more 
resource heavy, like it's the planning, it's the messiness, mm -hmm. it's the messy thinking that can happen before something gets translated into a project, which then you can also do as well. But all of those pieces, the way you handle projects, the way you handle tasks all has to be designed. And so I don't know if it's like a left brain, right brain thinker, like or whether it's a, a type of role that people tend to have where they lean toward one or the other. But what I didn't like about Asana was that everything is a task. So mm -hmm. my clients have like standard operating procedures and there's ways of doing things and there's sort of lists of things, but they're not necessarily a specific thing to do yet. That might influence tasks and it might turn into tasks. But so it didn't feel like there were these interim places where we could store some thinking and resources and sort of messy thinking around and that support the projects, if that makes sense. No, that totally makes sense. And I think um, I, I think both ClickUp and uh, Notion now offer those kinds of things mm. um, in a way that Asana and Trello and a lot of the like standard, mm -hmm. I don't even really like to call them project management systems because they're really more like task management task. systems. Yes. They're just like mm -hmm. glorified to do checklists. lists. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So like to me, Asana is a checklist mm -hmm. and um, Trello is a Kanban board. And uh, I always had a hard time with Trello, at least Asana to me, I felt like you could manage multiple projects relatively easily-ish, um, but that Trello, I always had a hard time being able to manage multiple projects at the same time and like mm -hmm. have a good, yep. um, if you are somebody who has a lot of irons in the fire or a lot of clients that you're working with, I always found Trello to be really challenging in that respect that I think Notion and ClickUp um, both do really well. Okay, so... Talk to me a little bit about your philosophies about um, picking out software or um, if folks ask you to recommend a software once it, it seems like once people know that you know a little <laughs> bit about software, they're like, tell me all like recommend other things to me. So what what are your philosophies when you're like doing that or picking it out for yourself? I love this question because I feel like this space is exploding, but everyone approaches it from different angles. Um, so I think even as we go here, we're probably all going to say completely different things. Um, I think for me, I start with functionality. Like, what are we actually trying to accomplish? I think often people are saying, we want a project manager, but they really just want a task tool. Or I want a task tool, but really they want a knowledge base. And I feel like unpacking that is my first step. Um, but after that, and I'm glad you said something about like Zapier, Zapier. Uh, I always say that wrong. Zapier. It rhymes with happier. Rhymes right? with happier. <laughs> Um, yeah, right. <laughs> but I think integrations and automation for me is probably the number one, like number two right behind function is what does it talk to? Because I'm, I mostly work with small teams. I'm not sure about everyone else here, but tiny teams, it's manpower is the most scarce resource. And so integrations or the ability to automate work is like the number one thing beyond just what exactly is it built to do? I, I really love that you said that too, because um, in some ways I have a somewhat opposite experience, but I can, to <laughs> but I can totally appreciate uh, like tools that integrate with Zapier are super important with my clients' workflows. But in some cases, I've worked with clients who are so very not tech savvy that the automation has actually added more complexity because they actually don't, it's almost magic is happening behind the scenes and they don't even know what's happening. And that has actually proven to be a bit of a problem in, in some cases with certain clients. Um, so while that is a factor of like, which things make sense to automate, which things do I need to kind of include instructions for and make sure that they know what is happening. Um, I think another part that I like to check in on is like, what's already working in your workflow? What are the parts that are working well? Where is there friction? Where are things always falling through the cracks, right? So it comes down to that functionality of like what's working, what's not working based on what is working or what's not working. Are there ways we can kind of streamline? Could could there be one tool that could hit three of those and get you 80% of the way there? And they don't have to be perfect, right? There's Even though I love Notion and I'm on the Notion bandwagon and it has replaced most of my tools, I know it's not always the best fit for everyone. Not everyone loves tinkering with it the way that I do. Like that's that's my fun pastime, but that I don't, I don't want my clients to have to suddenly add a new hobby that is learning Notion to their their timeline. So I think it's it's also, so um, automation is a piece of it, but also what's already working. And I don't want to add this whole new learning curve to them. So sometimes we'll take it in steps to like this month, we're going to focus on like getting your note keeping or your meeting notes or whatever in place. And then next month we can layer in something new and layer in something new. And with some clients that can take 
half a year to get them to the point where I want to get them to because their their tech skills aren't really there. Um, and other people, it's a lot easier to just say, let's let's change everything all at once. Let's just do it in one go, right? Yeah, I think um, for me, my philosophy is kind of a, a combination of both of yours. And my emphasis is always on looking at the software as an ecosystem. Yeah. So looking at everything um, and how it actually relates to each other. And like Marie talked about, I am often um, the person that comes in after they have set up Zapier like five years ago, and now they're afraid to touch it because yeah. they're afraid they're going to break something. And so they can't update the, their procedures where I think Zapier can be really, really powerful. And it is like the main piece that often is connecting all of these different tools. Um, I, I think there is an aspect of if you're not technologically savvy or you're not interested in like tweaking your process continually that it can seem like a little bit of a of a black box but yeah generally my philosophy is like let's look at everything that you have figure out what's working figure out what needs to be replaced but let's look at all of it as a whole because if you don't you end up with that like you picked up that one thing on AppSumo and oh. it seemed like a really good idea and either you forgot about it or and you're still paying for it Excellent. or you like hacked it onto your system and now you know software has evolved to the point where you can replace four of your tools with one that now has all of the features that you needed for those kinds of things um so there are a lot of you know right now we're talking specifically about ClickUp and notion primarily because that's you know where we tend to operate but there are a lot of other flexible project management tools out there like airtable or coda or um some of the new ones fiber mm -hmm. yeah um let's talk a little bit about why those weren't right uh like weren't a good fit for your business or who they might be a good fit for or use cases that they might be a good fit for um just for me table? <laughs> <laughs> i think so like so for me airtable is one that i actually do use airtable it's not my main project management system and i don't necessarily love it as a project management system um but i love it for its database capabilities i think that's a place where like notion is really good on the database side of things where ClickUp can kind of be hacked to be a database, but it's still not like you have a, if you have a lot of data or you really need to organize it in a specific way, it's not great yet. Um, no. And I don't know that it necessarily is ever going to be there because it's still at its core a task based. Everything is essentially a task. Um, but I love using Airtable for database like things where you have to like update a row or keep a big um, piece of content. I have a client that created a content library in Airtable. Mm. So like every piece of content that has ever been written and every piece of art that he's ever designed like lives in Airtable and it's completely searchable. So if you're looking for a resource to provide to somebody, like you can just search it and it just shows up. And I love that like aspect of it. Um, what do you, I mean, I, I will say that, you guys, what do you think? I love Excel and by extension, <gasps> Google Sheets, right? I'm sorry. I'm like, like I, I studied economics. Like I had to love Excel <laughs> <laughs> but um, I feel like Airtable does do a really good job of giving those like traditional tools a run for their money on the cloud. And I think one of the biggest things, like I agree with you, totally database, not tasks, even though people try to use like, it. People use it as a project management tool. Yeah. I don't Which, get that. Mm, yeah, I, don't I think either. if you have really like not very complicated projects, it could probably work. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> People... I'm like, I still think there's better things out yeah, there for yeah. it, but like click up, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Airtable has a really nice functionality around tags. And I feel like that is where it beats out the spreadsheet game. Like when you have multiple attributes, like that's where ClickUp actually does as well. But I think Airtable does a smoother job of it. Having ways for you to categorize and sort data into multiple categories and sort by it and track things by it. Mm -hmm. And because Airtable, we were talking about connections, Airtable connects to so many things. I feel like it's because yes. no one views it as a competitor. Everyone integrates with it. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, I think um, it's like, yeah. it can be an ad hoc backend database. Like there's a lot of no code companies now running their, like their Airtable is their database because of that connection quality. Yeah. I think the the ease to of being able to capture data in the, 
in a visual form, right? Like a really mm -hmm. nice sort of put your name and your details in there. And then suddenly it's in a database that you can access in so many different ways, I think is really valuable. Uh, like, so I have a course on Notion, but I took applications using an Airtable form because Notion doesn't <laughs> have that capability. So there are still yeah. small ways that I will still use Airtable, but I actually just recently downgraded my account because um, I think I was trying to use Airtable in ways that now I can do in Notion. Um, mm -hmm. So I, don't, I didn't really need it anymore. But for a while there, I was trying to, again, help those clients that weren't super tech savvy automate some of those pieces. And it was way over their head. Like it didn't matter how much of that awesomeness I put in place and was like, oh, and as soon as someone signs up for your program, yep. you can like, it didn't matter how much I explained it. It was, it felt really over their head. And I, I don't know if it's just the sort of uh, spreadsheet view that just it, it can be mm -hmm. a little intimidating for people that don't don't really use that. So um, I was like, well, if my clients aren't using it, it's it's not really making sense for me to kind of push this. So how can I simplify this? How can I make this even easier? And so in some cases, I will actually build kind of rebuild what I had built in Airtable in Notion but with a more manual process. So mm -hmm. now their instruction is import the CSV once a week, get your VA to do it. It takes five minutes and your data is already there. So there's some things just in my experience where the automation has been too complex for my clients. And so I've just kind of rebuilt some of those pieces in Notion and that's been, that's been more helpful. Yeah. But it's still, I think it's still an awesome tool. I think Airtable is awesome for so many use cases. I'm sure there's lots of other, um, yeah, Lots I'm getting ready to build an Airtable database for a speaking engagement process. So I have a client that does public speaking and we're trying to like, str he, he was working with a speaking company, like a company that like does all of that speaking engagement coordination mm. for you. And he's trying to make it in-house and we're going to use Airtable with a, like the inquiry form on the website is going to populate the Airtable database. And then we are actually going to use Airtable as kind of the main project management system because we want to use it to um, populate like Google Calendar invites with all of those little data points. Yeah. And Airtable is one of those, um, because it is a database, you can populate in um, the pieces of in information and then like format it in a text way a little bit easier than some other tools. So um, yeah, I definitely, Airtable is still a really critical piece of the back end of a lot of businesses. I think it's a really good for database type stuff. Most businesses grow on the fly. We add software and systems here and there, patching in our tools for now because it'll do. But for now almost always turns into forever because who wants to spend time picking out and setting up software when you could be out closing clients or doing, well, pretty much anything else. Most of the tools and systems in your backend are probably there because you went with the flow. You pick something that was recommended to you or because it's something you're just supposed to have. When you're starting to focus on getting lean and efficient in your business, evaluating your software is a great place to start. For remote companies, it's usually your second highest expense right after your team. So taking a few minutes to evaluate the tools you're paying for can pay big dividends. You can see if they're still useful. Are you still getting the value out of them? This can be a quick way to cut at least a few hundred dollars of costs and sometimes even a few thousand, which is a pretty decent payoff for an hour or two of work. If you're ready to tackle that software audit, I have created an easy tool for you to use. It'll take you step by step through auditing your current tools and evaluating them to see if they're the right tool. It'll also give you access to a library of software tools that I recommend regularly for my one-on-one -on -one clients. So you don't have to slog endlessly shopping through the masses of tools on the market. Head to scalespark.co slash software tool to get started. Um, how about Coda? So Coda is one that I have been intrigued about forever and so cool. still don't, I'm like, it's such a cool thing, but I don't have necessarily a good, I've never had a great use case for it. Do you guys have any, um, any thoughts? Have I you mean, heard any use cases? Yeah. When I've set it up, so I've set it up a few times, not a ton, but I think that goes with all of these tools, even though I love ClickUp, ClickUp isn't the majority of the PMs I set up. It's always based on what is going to click with someone. But I think what Marie was saying about setting up kind of like a more friendly looking spreadsheet. Um, I would use Coda for those kind mm. of clients who need is, a spreadsheet. Yeah. yeah. But they but can't. But it looks like a document. 
Exactly. Exactly. Like trick mm-hmm. them into thinking it's Notion, but <laughs> guess what? <laughs> it does things. I love it. <laughs> Um, but as a use case, an actual example of how I've had it used, I've used Coda as the recipient of a zap to keep data, just like you were saying, where it keeps a record of things that have happened in other systems. That's really for like low tech people. I think that's the extent of what I'll use zaps for is for data entry and for keeping things manually in sync that wouldn't otherwise stay in sync, like contacts, et cetera. Um, because then they don't have to interact with it. It's just when they're looking for that data, it's there. But I've had um, a client who actually used Coda because it's so mobile friendly for anything that they're doing on the road, even like collecting people's information or having sign-ins or check-ins or email newsletter signups, creating a little Coda um, like tab, it automatically added them onto their MailChimp or whatever it would be. Um, that was a really nice use case because it is just so friendly to have on your phone and it looks like they have a custom app for signing in. Mm, I like that. I will admit I don't dabble a lot anymore since using Notion. <laughs> like to me, I've just, I've refined my systems. I have so many templates in there. And whenever I work with a client, I'm like, oh, you don't have a system here. I'll spin up all my templates into your into your workspace. So to me, it almost, it almost feels irresponsible to like keep, you know, shiny object syndrome, exploring all of these different pieces of tech. And I know that again, Notion isn't always, it's not going to be the best fit for everybody. Um, but I work with very few clients at a time. And because it's so, they have access to me, it's so easy for me to explain anything. I have built in SOPs, everything is sort of ready. So I honestly don't spend a lot of time. Anytime there's a new tool, people are like, have you heard the new hotness? I'm like, that's nice. My system's <laughs> are working really well. I have faith in the API. Like I feel good about that. So I know that I'm maybe a little heavier on that, on that bandwagon and I don't always explore every single boss. I just feel like it would take so long. I think that's also like um, a little bit of the difference in business models here in that Layla and I do software implementation for like, that's a core functionality of our business model um, where, you know, Marie, you build software. So actually, that brings up a really interesting point, um, Marie, though. You and Tiago Forte, who is the founder of Building a Second Brain, um, had a really interesting conversation on Twitter the other day about kind of that next new tool idea and how like Notion is the cool kid in town right now, but that there is kind of, there's always going to be another one on the horizon and how constantly looking at new tools can be um, kind of self-sabotage, which I, I, you know, part of my job is to look at new tools. Mm. Um, So it can be really hard to fight that like shiny object syndrome. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? Yeah. And I think, like you said, it probably makes a lot more sense for your business model just to be aware of even what are your clients familiar with. So when they have certain Mm -hmm. language and they're coming to you being like, oh, I heard about Rome. Do I need that for my business? You know, it makes sense, I think, for you guys to be on top of what's happening there. But um, I guess the, one of the recent experiences I've noticed is like people who've taken building a second brain, Tiago, I mean, the teaching is very tool agnostic, but he relies heavily on Evernote. So almost all of the lessons, all the examples, everything is done using Evernote. Now he's hearing a lot more people using Notion. And I took the second brain course and I implemented all of it in Notion and was like, Notion is clearly the best tool for this. It's so organic. You can do almost anything. You can link any text. So I really implemented a system and I went really deep on it and started teaching other people like, hey, here's how I'm using building a second brain and Notion together. Um, And so I think he's noticed a lot of his audience is saying, hey, I know you talk about Evernote, but like, what about Notion over here? And I think because he definitely leans more toward being tool agnostic, but he's still clearly opinionated about using Evernote as his... I mean, everybody has their preferences, I think. Totally. And I, and I think because he, um, there's almost like a, you know, like the early adopters, you know, the laggards and whatever. And so Evernote's been kind of this like classic for a long time, right? People have been using it for a very long time. And it's sort of one of those classic tools. But as more and more tools come about and there's more competition, people are moving away from Evernote and they're finding more tools that I think are more activating and less archival. And they're a little bit more like, how do I take what I'm saving here and apply it to a project and apply it to a task? So it has a different like texture to it in a way. Um, and so I've, I've been very 
vocal on Twitter and especially with Tiago and saying, I think your methods make so much sense with Notion. If you ever want to connect about this, like I'm happy to have this conversation. And there's been a little bit of, of resistance there, I think, as like, ah, it's just a new hot tool, you know, and same with Rome Research, right? There's another place that people have been I was using Notion and now there's this Rome research. Oh no, my world is imploding. It's like, it doesn't have to be either or. Rome research is a research tool. It doesn't, it's not a project management tool necessarily. It's not a database, like it's a type of database. It doesn't have to be either or. And so I do think no matter what tool you're using, people do kind of hear about a new one and they get all like, oh no, I just spent all this time learning this tool. And now you don't have to, if there isn't like a gap in your process and what you're doing is working well, there's no need to kind of, oh God, it's all or nothing and having to explore something different. (laughs) So um, I feel like sometimes Tiago and I, we agree and other times I'm like, I don't necessarily agree with the way that you that you see this. And so we sometimes get into little Twitter arguments about that. Lena, talk to talk to me a little bit about your perspective on this. Um, You probably have the same issue I do, which is that part of our business model is to know all of the new shiny tools. Um, And at least for me, sometimes that can um, you go down the rabbit hole and you're like, maybe I should switch. And um, so talk to me a little bit how that works for you. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's so hard. But part of why, you know, I got into this business or this business model is because I love learning about the new tools. I, you know, I view the work that we're doing as kind of an ambassador of product. So we have to really know the product, like what mm-hmm. product is currently and what product is becoming. It's kind of like being a fashion stylist, yeah. right? Like you need to know what's on the runway. <laughs> Yes. That's cool. but like, are you, you con- I am constantly it. looking at everybody's roadmap. Yeah. Like the fact that software oh, yeah. now have public roadmaps, I am constantly like, okay, cool. What's the timeline? I really need this thing. How long is it going to be? Um, yeah. Like, I- Canny, Canny yes. IO, you know, where everyone, a lot of people are using that or Trello for their roadmap. Ooh, it is dangerous, but <laughs> super fun to check out. And I think like we need to keep up on those things. But I think more like Marie was saying, it's it's about knowing what the shiny objects are so you can talk people off the ledge. I think mm-hmm. one tool, am I allowed to hate on software on here? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. One tool, there are two tools even that are getting a lot of, um, I'm just going to focus on one, Trainual. Okay. Mm. Tons of money on advertising, big names yeah. speaking about it. If anyone's not familiar, it's supposed to be an SOP tool helping you create your standard operating procedures. And that's all it does. But it's basically just a table of contents for a bunch of word docs yes and i think if i hadn't tried that account when i had someone come to me who was looking to build out a pretty robust training system and they're like yeah we've been paying for train you all and it's super expensive but it's the tool and by being familiar with it i think that that gives you an edge to understand like my first thing is always what are you actually trying to accomplish and understanding what the tool is meant to do and where it's heading I think it helps you talk people off of the ledge and get them to what they actually fundamentally want versus what they think they want mm-hmm. or what they think they need because someone said a, something about it on Facebook or on a podcast like this. Yeah. And they just went out and bought it. Someone said Nobody it needs to, yeah. click up or notion. Like yeah, that's, no. At no point are we saying, we're just saying like, let's have a discussion about this. Nobody's telling you that you need to switch your systems. Mm-hmm. Please don't. Yeah, please don't switch your systems. Yeah. I have stuck with ClickUp and I'm in this phase. I've stuck with ClickUp since I found it when it was in 1.0. And yeah, the same. reason, yeah. And I think I think one thing for me, at least when I'm deciding to switch or not switch, I think you have to look at software as evolutions and you're, you're investing in a team who's building, yeah. the product team is like your people. They're your outsourced yeah. tech team. And so looking at the roadmap of where a tool is going, I mean, you're along for the ride in my mind. And I think not liking the roadmap or the industry niche or the direction, that's a good reason to switch, but... Something that got a lot of money on paid ads, eh, not so much. <laughs> oh, I agree. And I actually, um, Trainual is a great example. I have a real hard time with people that are documenting processes outside of the system where they are executing Ugh. the processes. Like to me, we'll yes. be like, we need SOPs. I'm like, how about you just set up your task tool so that it has the SOPs in it because nobody is going to look at your Word doc about how this is supposed to happen except when they start out. Like take your SOPs and make them actionable, yeah. <laughs> make them, put them where, where they live. You don't um, need a digital dusty binder. Yes. <laughs> yes. That is literally the best definition of like the trainual or um, Sorry, trainual. <laughs> what is um, process street is another oh, yeah. kind oh, yeah. of similar product that a lot of people do um, that it becomes literally that digital dusty binder yeah. that lives outside of where people are actually doing their work. It's almost over engineered, um, right? It's yeah. yes. 
Um, and even like, I haven't found a great use case, even for like really big companies. I'm still like, mm, wouldn't it be better where, you know, your other stuff is like, maybe I have um, used process street. I have to confess. I feel like I'm confessing have you? to a crime here. I have no. actually, I had one well, use what case. What was the use it. case? Tell me the okay. use case. So I was working with a nonprofit who was a branch of a larger national organization. So they couldn't control or get data in or out of their main systems for anything. Mm. But all they did, the only task that was taking up their entire admins full week was, and they had one paid staff person. So like it was, they needed the time back was sending emails. Mm. And so that's the only automated task that comes out of process street is sending emails that are scripted with dynamic fields based on a process. And so I did actually, Interesting. I got to confess, that was a pretty good use case yeah. of process street and they're able to do it on the free plan, which is pretty cool. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> That's my guilty that. secret. No, I think yeah, it's I'm great. Like, it no, works. I think like the software is there for a reason and there are really good use cases for all of the tools that we're talking about. Yeah. Um, there are really good use cases for Coda or mm -hmm. for Rome or for like all of these things have use cases where that is actually the specific best tool for the thing that you're trying to do. And that's really what we're what we're talking about is find the best tool for what you're actually trying to accomplish, um, whether that's managing your entire workflow or, you know, one single process that this is the best tool for that. Yeah. So let's say that folks are going to pick a system, double down on it and really get it working well. What cool things are you guys doing in either Notion or ClickUp that have really changed how productive or focused you're able to be? I mean, I can speak to my, my personal experience is a lot of the personal processes that connect with the business processes because I'm a solo show and so all of my business and personal stuff is in there and so daily journaling weekly agenda monthly I guess you could say a monthly agenda but all of those are connected to my sales databases so I can see on a monthly weekly daily basis how much revenue I'm earning in the same place that I'm also keeping track of like how was I feeling that day how productive was I that day what was going on my daily tasks and so for me it's the integration of so many different data points what was I reading that day what was I reading that week I can zoom in or zoom out at any scale and see that data at any level. A lot of that's done through automated rollups. So it'll be like, pull the data from this field, like relational fields or whatever. And so I personally just love being able to see the data to see and to see whatever data I want to in a single instance, right? Like uh, I can have a filtered view that's like, just show me my, my progress or just show me my moods. Just show me my photo of the day, right? I can really just kind of see what I want to see. Uh, I can visualize my goals and kind of see how far along I am in an automated fashion. Like there's just so much, I think the data is so beautiful and it has actually made me more mindful of where my time is going, how I'm feeling day to day and that impacts my business. So I just, again, love being able to see all of that in one beautiful place that actually looks visually appealing to me. How about you, Leila? Yeah, totally opposite. <laughs> love it. <laughs> I, I love it. I would go crazy <laughs> if my journal was right next to all the things I had to do, but like I, I'm listening to this, I'm like, okay, yeah. And I think that's, that's a lot of what I associate Notion with, and that makes sense why it doesn't work yeah. for how I work. Yeah. I would say if there's one thing that I've really changed with, I think ClickUp, right? I'm gonna use that as the example of how I've been using that to kind of make my life a little bit easier. I stay pretty up on what's coming out next in ClickUp. And I know automations are coming out very soon. And- I can't wait, I'm so oh impatient. Oh, it's gonna be so good. Zaps <laughs> in ClickUp, what? Um, but I think the number one thing that I've really um, been using ClickUp that's been really helpful is not getting all of my stuff in one place, but all of my client stuff in one place. So I admit, like, I'm not using Airtable currently. I'm still using Google Sheets because I haven't found, you know, it just hasn't been justified for me. Mm -hmm. But I have um, been setting up a client portal kind of system within ClickUp. So now that there's public sharing using mm -hmm. the embed view. So just like in um, Notion, you can have data points from all over the place pull in. ClickUp's now moving towards that kind of um, platform approach too, where you can embed a view from your DevSato client portal. You can embed your invoice from here. You can embed your data spreadsheet from here. Like I've embedded, I think my, my knowledge base, embedded my billings platform, embedded all these things into what is a task space or a task folder. And it's shared with my client. And I think that's, I haven't really fully gone all the way into it yet, but I see this being the replacement of so many other tools. Sorry, Dubsado. <laughs> <laughs> As I'm moving forward to just kind of condense by just embedding rather than needing to have all these different places that clients have to go. Yep. 
Yeah, I've done a lot of the embedding as well, particularly like if it's a Google Sheet and it's something that's mm. always going to be a Google Sheet, like just being able to put the link there to be like, oh, here it is. I don't have to go look for it has been really helpful. Um, for me, the thing that I have started to do is kind of um, it, take the um, it was very heavily influenced by Marie, your daily journal and um, Tara McMullen. Um, it has been sharing a lot about her leadership dashboard. Um, and I have taken those two and kind of uh, applied them in ClickUp. So I now have a daily journal using like custom fields um, to have like, what's my mood and um, how much sleep did I get? And- um, That dashboard must be scary. <laughs> those, so those little bits, like it's in a it's separate area that every day, like I have a recurring task that pops up, that's my journal. Um, and also the thing that I took from Tara is, is that she um i always kind of struggled as a um founder particularly like a solo person um of getting my annual my quarterly my um, monthly plans tied into the actual tasks yes. in my um system and so what i've kind of done is do that so tara has like here's your quarterly plan here's what's going to happen every quarter every month every um so i now have it down to quarter month and week so that i can use that kind of visual dropbox that um notion allows you to do where you're like i'm gonna put this thing here and this thing here and this thing here um all of those are kind of set up in my um click up now to replicate kind of that personal thing that ties my goals back to what am i doing that really helped me figure out like what am i supposed to do next <laughs> what is the next most important thing to do um and so that's been really interesting um i've actually been watching a ton of notion videos and then like going oh that's really because people are being very um Generous. They're sharing a lot about, not necessarily about Notion, but about how they work. Oh, I know. Because That's the in order part. to, <laughs> like, and, and nobody's really doing that with other tools like it's it's a project management tool that people are sharing the behind the scenes of how their business works and how how their like bullet like, journal yeah. yeah like how their daily process works and there's so many um applications of that and people are sharing that in the notion community kind of at large that i'm so enjoying watching people what they're doing in notion because that's how they're sharing it but applying that to like you can apply a lot of that to other project management tools Absolutely. um and so i've been doing a lot of a lot of that that has been really interesting taking the pieces that are really useful from that and figuring out how to put it in click up and make it useful so is there anything you guys think we should talk about that we haven't touched on already software project management anything in there talk i've got one yeah, yeah go for it <laughs> please don't ask facebook which one you should use ah yes <laughs> also true yes <laughs> oh yes oh man because i feel like what even just what this conversation shows is like it's the meant like I think we use system and software as synonyms, mm. which is weird because we, we the system yeah. for organizing, I feel like I forget who we were just talking about, but his course being Diego, yeah. you know, system, yeah, system agnostic. And so when people are like, which, which tool should I use every time I'm commenting back, like, what do you need? What are you doing? <laughs> and how does your brain work? Right? Like you were saying, yes. like, you, like, I'm more visual or need it to, to show in this way. And you're like, oh, I thought that would be that would cause me great anxiety. And so, you know, <laughs> you probably do the same thing when you're talking to your clients of like, what do you need to see on a daily basis? What do your daily and weekly routines look like? And then let's design your systems, your processes to reflect the way your brain works to not add anxiety, mm -hmm. but to reduce it. And so I think there is an element of like human learning and that like, how do you as a human show up in the world and need to see your data because there's no point in like chucking all of these things at you that are just gonna cause, you know, system override, <laughs> system corruption. Well, and like, the, thing, up, yeah. the thing that I love about systems like ClickUp or, um, or Notion is that the person using it has a little bit of control about how they see the information. Yeah. So like when you're looking at implementing tools for your team, some of it is how do you think, mm. but maybe your team doesn't think the same way. And so the tool that works really well for you, if it's something really, you know, say you're picking between Asana and Trello, those are pretty, like they work the way they work. 
they're not super flexible in terms of how you view the data or how you're like controlling the information. And something that I think that ClickUp and Notion do really well is give the user flexibility to take the data that's in the system and view it in a way that works for them too. So you're not as constrained by how your brain works or how your project manager's brain works. It can work well for everybody that has to use it. Hit the nail on the head. Yep. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else we should touch on before we wrap up here? I mean, I could nerd out about systems and tools. You know, all I'm day. like, we could talk about this forever. <laughs> um, Hours. <laughs> So uh, thank you both so much for being here today. Marie, if folks want to uh, connect with you or learn more about Mo Notion, where can they do that? Uh, yeah, they can find me at mariepoulin.com. I'm also on Twitter at Marie Poulin, and you can probably find me on YouTube, Marie Poulin. <laughs> Marie Poulin yeah, plus the Notion. Notion videos. <laughs> like if you're a Notion person, go watch the Notion videos. Even if you're not and you're just a workflow person, like go check them out because they're fabulous. Thank I you. love them. Layla, how about you? How can folks find you? Yeah. So you'll probably find me under my business info. So processdriven.co, no hyphen, just one long, beautiful word <laughs> on Instagram, Facebook, online, whatever. Um, it's pretty much just me. So I would love to chat with anyone who has questions about, you know, ClickUp or also figuring out what your brain actually works with. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, ladies, for being here. As you heard in our discussion, each of us has a different approach to how we set up our software and why we chose the particular software tool that we did. But what you should have also taken away was how important it is for whatever software tool you pick to work with your brain. How you think about projects and what kinds of projects and tasks make up the work you do will heavily influence how you'll get along with a particular project management tool or really any software you use to run your business. Our goal here wasn't to convince you to use Notion or ClickUp or any other specific tool, but to get you to think critically about why you picked the project management software you did and if it's still serving you. Or if maybe you'd be better off taking a step back and having a look at the software that makes up the foundation of your business and maybe updating some of your tools to better serve the business you're running now. And if you're thinking about how to make your business model resilient, efficient, and financially stable right now, you're not alone. Up until a few weeks ago, the conversations I had about examining your money and smoothing out your operating systems were all about growth. My clients and I looked at how they could set themselves up for success as they onboarded more clients and watched their bank accounts grow. But now I'm having a lot more conversations about stability. Business owners like you are asking how to weather uncertainty while setting the stage for sustainable growth over time. The good news? The work is the same. The work you've been doing or thinking about doing to prepare your business for growth is the same work you need to do to shore up your foundations when things are tight. I'd love to help you run a leaner, more efficient, more resilient business that allows you to save money while maintaining profitability. In just one week, I'll create your custom action plan for navigating uncertainty beyond that financial padding you keep in the bank. I'll share my recommendations for your software, finances, people, operations, and more. Want to find out more? Go to scalespark.co slash action plan or shoot me an email at susan at scalespark.co to schedule a free call today. Next week, I'll be talking to Sean McMullen of Yellow House Media. We're going to talk about when you do really need a project manager and when you could save some money and management headache by just not having project managers as part of your team. So we're going to dig into the question of when do you need a project manager? So make sure you hit subscribe in your favorite podcast player so you don't miss that episode. Break the Ceiling is produced by Yellow House Media. Our production coordinator is Sean McMullen. This episode is edited by Marty Seafeld with production assistance by Kristen Rundbeck.